In this demonstration, we'll guide you through the dissection of a sheep heart. It's going to be helpful to first visualize these structures on the model of a human heart. One thing to note is that with the heart facing towards you, the right side of the heart is on your left, and the left side of the heart is on your right. The first thing I like to do is to orient the heart, and the most obvious structure on the anterior side of the heart is this large vessel, which is the pulmonary trunk. And you can see the pulmonary trunk exiting the right ventricle, and it's going to branch into the right and left pulmonary arteries that carry blood to the lungs. Another obvious feature on the anterior face of the heart is the interventricular sulcus, which separates the right and left ventricles and houses some of the coronary blood vessels. The apex of the heart points towards the left. Once you've oriented the heart, you can distinguish the four chambers. The lower chambers are the right ventricle and the left ventricle, and the upper chambers are the right atrium and the left atrium. The external anterior part of each atrium forms a flap-like structure that's called the auricle. And the term auricle is derived from the word for ear because it looks a little bit like an ear. Next, we'll take a look at the blood vessels entering and exiting the heart. Blood flows into the heart through the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. And on the model, it's easy to see these vessels entering the right atrium. On the sheep heart, it might not be as obvious because sometimes these vessels are cut away. From here, the blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle and out the pulmonary trunk to the lungs. From the lungs, the blood returns to the heart through the pulmonary veins, which you can see here entering the left atrium. From the left atrium, blood flows into the left ventricle and then out the aorta, which is a large vessel that you can see just posterior to the pulmonary trunk. In humans, the aorta has three branches, but in the sheep heart, you'll only see two branches off the aorta. Now we'll look at the interior features of the heart. The first thing you'll notice on the interior of the atria is that the anterior walls are lined by these ridged muscles and we call those pectinate muscles. And pectinate comes from the word for comb because it looks a little bit like a comb. The upper and lower chambers of the heart are separated by atrioventricular valves. On the right side of the heart, this valve has three cusps, so we call it the tricuspid valve. And on the left side of the heart, the valve only has two cusps, so we call that the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. The AV valves are anchored by these thin white collagen filaments called the chordae tendinae. And the chordae tendinae are attached to the walls of the ventricles at the papillary muscles. When the ventricles contract, the papillary muscles pull the chordae tendinae so that they're taut, and this prevents the valve from everting into the atria when the ventricles are contracting. And the function of this is to assure one-way blood flow from the atria to the ventricles. The valves between the ventricles and the systemic circulation are called semilunar valves because the cusps resemble half moons. The semilunar valve that we're looking at here is the pulmonary semilunar valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. And the corresponding valve on the left side of the heart is the aortic semilunar valve. And the last structure we'll point out on the heart is the interventricular septum which is the thick muscular wall that separates the right and left ventricles. And that covers all the structures on the human heart model. Now we'll dissect a sheep heart and look for the same structures on the real organ. Remember that every heart is different, 
So the heart you look at in lab might not be exactly the same as this heart, but you should be sure to handle a real heart and get a feel for the look and the orientation of the structures that you're going to be responsible to know. The first thing we're going to do is to orient the anterior face of the heart by looking for the pulmonary trunk and the interventricular sulcus. I can see the interventricular sulcus right here, separating the right and left sides of the heart. And then here, I can see the pulmonary trunk. So if you can see this large vessel here exiting the right side of the heart, there's the pulmonary trunk. And these are going to be your landmarks for orienting the anterior side of the heart. Now we'll look at the four chambers of the heart externally. So we have the superior chambers. And you can see here the right auricle and the left auricle. And these are those wrinkled ear-like structures, which are the anterior parts of the atria. And then we can see the right ventricle and the left ventricle separated by the interventricular sulcus. And the other large vessel that you can see on the exterior view of the heart is the aorta. And that's a large diameter vessel just posterior to the pulmonary trunk. And in this view, you can see one of the two branches off the sheep aorta. So now let's take a little bit of a closer look at the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. So here's the pulmonary trunk, and just posterior to that is the aorta. So you can see how those two blood vessels are oriented on the heart. You may be able to see some of the smaller vessels entering and exiting the heart. So if we take this heart and we turn it over to the posterior side, right here, you can see this vessel entering into the right atrium. And that's the superior vena cava. And if we look at the left atrium, you might be able to see the pulmonary veins entering into the left atrium. And in this specimen, it's been cut pretty close, but we can still see a little remnant of the pulmonary vein, okay, as it would enter the left atrium. Now let's take a look at the internal structures of the sheep heart. So remember that every heart is a little bit different. So when we're showing the internal structures, we're going to use a few different hearts. In this heart, you can clearly see the bicuspid valve right here between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And this is a great view of the cusp of a valve. In this heart, you can see that the bicuspid valve is anchored by these white strings, which are the chordae tendinae. And the chordae tendinae are anchored by papillary muscles. And in this view, you can see two of them. One is right there, and one is right there. So these are papillary muscles. The other thing you can see in this heart is that the muscular wall of the left ventricle is much larger or much thicker than the muscular wall of the right ventricle. And separating the two ventricles is the interventricular septum. So the last structures we'll look at on this internal dissection are the pectinate muscles. And these are the ridged muscles that line the atria. And you can see them on both the left side and the right side. This concludes our dissection of the sheep heart.